How to import a skeletal mesh with C++ in Unreal? Because, well, like the static mesh, the skeletal mesh are pretty important in a project. So let's get to it. But before we start, uh, this video is going to reuse some code we wrote in the video 3 of the series, so I recommend to go see that one, but if you don't want to, here is the code. So here is our other file, it's relatively empty as usual, and we're going to add our new function in it. So here it is. We have a new function to import a skeletal mesh. So here it is, as input I'm taking the source path of the fbx file we want to import, on the computer and the destination path of where we want to save the new skeletal mesh in the project and as output i'm going to return the imported skeletal mesh right here that way if you want to do something with it you can because well you have the skeletal mesh and since i'm using a new class right here i'm just going to forward declare it at the top to make sure that it always works so class uh, use skeletal mesh right here and one last thing before we jump in the cpp just remember that this is not going to work in a package build this is just an editor only function so good okay that's it for the header file now let's jump in the CPP. And here we're going to start with the include. So the first thing we're going to include is the code from the third video of the series. So we are able to process import task more easily. And then we need two other includes. Uh, the one that's going to let us set all the different import settings for our new FBX. So here we have the FBX import UI and also the FBX skeletal mesh import data. Those two includes are inside the Unreal ED module, which is an editor only module, but it's still a module that we have to include inside the build.cs file. So let's go in there and make sure that we have the Unreal Unreal ED module already included in the private dependencies. And since I already have it, I can go back in the CPP file and start coding the function. And actually, the logic of the function is super simple because we already did most of the work inside the video 3 of the series. So we're just going to call all those functions that are already there. So first, we have to create an import task to be able to import an asset. It's super simple. We just create an input task right here. We have the task and then we can tell Unreal to import the task by calling the process import task function, which is inside the same library that we did in the previous video that process import task is going to import the asset for us and then it's going to tell us which asset that was imported during the process in our case we want to make sure that this asset is actually a skeletal mesh so i'm just going to cast it to a skeletal mesh right here if the cast worked it means that we properly imported a skeletal mesh and that's awesome and we then want to return that new asset at the end of the function right here so it's super simple we just create an import task we process the import task it's going to return us a skeletal mesh if it worked and if it worked, well, I'm just returning the skeletal mesh at the end of the function. But now we're still missing one little thing because we have the option parameter right here, which is a new variable that we didn't create yet. So that's why Visual Studio is complaining a little bit. It's actually an optional parameter in the create import task. And we're going to use that new parameter to specify all the different settings that we want to apply to the skeletal mesh during the import. So for example, we have the size, the scaling, everything. And those settings includes all the different settings that we have in the FBX import option window that we usually see when we drag and drop an FBX in Unreal. It pops up a window with a bunch of settings and these are all the different settings that we're going to set inside the option object. And that object is of type FBX import UI that we have right here. So here we're creating a new FBX import UI object. I named it option and we have it right here. We're going to use that object to specify all the different settings that we want to apply to the skeletal mesh. And that's the only purpose of that object actually. It's just going to apply all those settings to the skeletal mesh during the import. And and actually, since this object is super generic, then it's used for all the different type of FBX import in the project. So we have the static mesh, skeletal mesh, and animations that can be imported using an FBX. And they are all using the same object for their options. So the first thing we're going to have to do is to specify that we want to import a skeletal mesh specifically. So here, these are the options that let us decide that we want to import a skeletal mesh. By default, it's automatically deciding which type of object we want to import. But in our case, we don't want to do that. So that's why right here I'm setting that variable to false to make sure that we are deciding ourselves that we want to import a skeletal mesh so here in the mesh type to import we're just specifying okay we want a skeletal mesh and then we're going to decide okay do we want to import the mesh well yes in our case we want to import a skeletal mesh so let's import the mesh that just makes sense so let's make it to true and then do we want to import it as a skeletal mesh yes once again I want to import it as a skeletal mesh so let's set that one to true also and do we want to create the physical asset that one is not mandatory but it's always nice to have a physical asset with all of our skeletal mesh. So I'm going to set it to true also. So yeah, we're just going to force the import to import a skeletal mesh. We're going to import the mesh, import it as a skeletal mesh and tell it to create a physical asset at the same time. 
And then we have another batch of variables that affect what we're going to import during the process. So do we want to import the animation at the same time as our skeletal mesh? You can do that. That's not an issue. But in my case, I'm not going to. I'm not going to import the animation. I just want to import the skeletal mesh for that specific case. And then do we want to import the textures that are in the FBX? Yes, in my case, I'd like to import the texture. So I'm setting it to true. Same thing for the materials. Do I want to import the material? Yes, why not? I'm also going to reset the materials if there's a conflict and I'm going to set the LOD number back to the default value that we have usually when we're importing a skeletal mesh so all these variables you can modify them depending on your needs uh, so if you want to import the animation yes you can do it if you don't want to import the texture well you can also so these are just some other elements that you can import during the import of the skeletal mesh and then finally we have all the other settings that are inside the fbx import ui window that we have when we drag and drop fbx in unreal and there's a lot of variables so i'm just gonna scroll down a little bit right here and i'm going to paste them right here so yeah, we have a lot of variables, but you know all of them probably because they are all inside the UI import options window that pops up when you try to import an FBX in Unreal. So in those settings, we have import the translation, rotation, and scale, convert scene, force front X axis, convert scene unit, transform vertex to absolute, bake pivot in vertex, import mesh LODs, normal import method, normal generation method, compute weight normal, reorder material to fbx order import content type uh, vertex color import option uh, update skeleton uh, reference pose uh, use t0 as ref pause uh, preserve uh, smoothing groups uh, import meshes in bone hierarchy import uh, morph targets uh, threshold position uh, threshold uh, tangent normal threshold uh, uv and finally morph uh, threshold position and obviously for all those settings right here you can set them to whatever you need depending on the import you're doing in my case i'm hard coding all those variables because I want to keep this video a little bit shorter because I don't want to have to add all those inputs to my function right here and then feed them one by one. It will take a little bit too much time so that's why I'm just art coding all the variables that I want and most of them are actually just the default values that we have in the UI when we import an FBX for the first time in Unreal. But yeah, don't be afraid to change those settings. These are the same settings that you have in the import options and you can do whatever you want with them depending on the import type you want to do. So okay, I guess that's actually it for this function we have everything we needed to do for the import skeletal mesh function and now it's time to jump in Unreal to test if it works. So here I am in Unreal and as usual I created a user widget to be able to specify which FBX I want to import and where I want to save it in the project and when I click on the import button it should call the new function we created today. So I'm gonna go in the graph to see that. I'm importing the skeletal mesh feeding it the path of my FBX right here and also the destination path of where I want to save the new skeletal mesh in the project. Perfect. So now let's go see if it works. I'm gonna go run my user utility widget right here and we have the new user interface right here and my paths are already written for me. I can click on import and it should import the skeletal mesh for me. That's pretty good. If I make a typo in the path, well, it doesn't work because, well, the FBX doesn't exist anymore. So yeah, that's not good. Let's just make sure that you're not making a typo when you're importing your skeletal mesh. Voila. So here we go. I have my skeletal mesh and if I go in my test folder, I should see it. Yes, I have it right here. I have my new chicken skeletal mesh that was just imported right here and then we also have the physical asset that was created at the same time we have the skeleton obviously and we also have the material that was imported at the same time as my skeletal mesh so skeletal mesh physical asset skeleton and material and if i open my skeletal mesh to see all the different settings because on the left right here we can find all the different settings that we set during the import process so we have all the different settings right here there's are all the same settings that we set during the import and you can find them right here we can also see that we have a material applied to the skeletal mesh we also have the skeleton right here that represents the skeletal mesh obviously and finally if we open the physical asset we can see that well we have a physics asset that is generated and assigned to my skeletal mesh perfect so that's going to conclude today's video and i'm gonna see you in the next one bye bye